So we have understood about default arguments, right? So the word default itself says we pass some value as default. But I'll tell you one more interesting concept about default arguments along with variable arguments now. But what do you mean by variable length arguments? Let's make it simple because sometimes programmer doesn't know how many how many types of values or how many values we need to pass into a function or how many values a function may receive, right? So we don't have any clarity of how many number of values we need to pass or our function should be in such a way that it may have any number of values. It should accept and it should execute the same way, right? That's where if you want to develop a function that can accept any number of arguments. That is the reason variable length. The length will be variable. That means the length can be increased or decreased. That generally happens, right? In the same way, the syntax will be like this. Your function name is add. So first one is formal or formal argument. And the next thing is star arcs. Basically, you keep star to unpack the values. The same thing I'll be explaining with a very simple example. So let me open our IDLE. And basically, what do you we use star to represent the variable length arguments? But I'll make a very simple example so that you can easily relate the concept of variable length arguments. So when we go for variable length arguments, we don't know the number of arguments we are trying to pass. That is the reason we will be tied up in a situation where the number of arguments are not fixed. So the number of arguments are basically not fixed. So in that case, we use variable length arguments with the symbol star. So that's where we use the symbol star. So to represent that we can already use or we can also use star to unpack a values within a list also. Because if you give a value like this, if you place a values like this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you can also fetch the values from this like. So when you give print of A, you get the list. But when you give print of star A, you see the difference over here. That means you are trying to unpack the values from a list. See, this is different and this is different. That means you are trying to write a, you are generally, how do you extract the values from a list in a sequence? You write for i in a, you write print of i comma end is equal to space. If you want to see side by side, you can clearly understand the same result in both the cases. You see, that's where you are trying to unpack the values from a list or a tuple. So we use the same concept of star here. That means you can also give like this b is equal to 1, 4, 5 and you can directly give instead of a, if you pass a, what happens when you print b, you should try these possible ways, otherwise you don't get the flavor of python. So when you give the input elements here, what happened? You got the nested list inside it. That's where you got the nested list here. That is the reason you see, because I gave a, so 1, 4, 5 a, what is a we are having over there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, sorry. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you can clearly see the difference in execution part. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and this is, uh, we are trying to print the output in the same single line. So 1, 4, 5 and this is the list. So what happens if you try to use instead of A, when you keep star A. So let me keep these all, every element, I mean every line in triple quotes. So I want to show you the same result. So when you keep star A, there will be never a nested list, but the arguments are unpacked from the list. See, there's a pretty much difference between this output and this output. So that is the prominence of star. So with that logic, we'll understand the concept of variable length arguments by taking a very simple use case. So with that example, you can easily understand. And then we'll go for the another use case of explaining variable length arguments. So we generally keep variable length arguments as star arcs. You can keep any variable name. So basically we keep it as star arcs. You can keep star A, star B, whatever it is. So it's fine. So let me take a very simple example like this and then we'll go ahead with another use case. So if you don't want to get this result, you can just keep it as everything in quotation. So I'll just remove the quotation here and I'll place these quotes here. So then we'll try to write how does we relate these values with the help of star arcs. So I define my function as print it. So my function name is print it and I define it as star arcs because 
I don't know anything. So I just write, I don't know what are the arguments my function can take or whatever I'm trying to take. I can take anything. Suppose I write for i in arguments because you see whenever you're giving star you're trying to unpack the values so i don't know whether uh, arguments can be a sequence or not first i'll just write for i in arcs where i'll just try to print each and every value so print of i just keep i and if you want to see side by side you can keep end is equal to space okay now what do we do is we don't run this here we'll call the function from interactive mode so save and execute so when i give print underscore it see it is expecting star x so i give 5 you got 5 very good so when you give print underscore it i give 5 comma 26 there you go you see you got there is no error over there you are not worrying about the positional arguments suppose if i give a string socket codenan and 26 you are given three arguments there you go it's simple how many number of arguments you can give you can give any number of arguments that is the beauty of variable length arguments in python see you can give any number of arguments you are trying to unpack the values so with that logic let's take one more example so i hope you got this point star arcs you can keep anything suppose what happens if you try to give one print statement here because i am trying to call the function not from this mode or directly from the interactive mode so that it will be easier so when I give print underscore it 14 3.15 and I can directly give a string. You see, you got a space over here. If you want to see the result in a better way, you can write anything over it. So just not worry about the code I write, only worry about the logic. That's what I always tell because logic matters everywhere. You can write your own way of coding. You can write on your own way, but make sure how you are trying to write okay so based on that logic only when you are trying to write variable length arguments always worry about the always worry about whether you are declaring it in the format of star star or not because if you don't declare star that doesn't mean that how you are passing multiple values right now when you go for default arguments if you just make sure suppose if i write like this you write define a b of a is equal to 25 and you write b so what you are expecting, you are expecting return a plus b, okay. Now when I call the function print of 35, you are expecting 35 plus 25, answer is 60, right? Very good. But you see, non-default argument follows default argument. That means the first argument should never ever be a default argument. So there you have made a mistake so if you try to give one more thing 35 plus 24 when you execute that then you don't get any error but you are getting error again why you already made a is 25 so it will never ever allow you so don't do that instead of this if you want to make one default argument don't make the first argument as default but make second argument as a default that's where i am just trying to make you understand so 35 how it is 35 because a plus b what you gave so you got only print of 35 right what is the mistake we gave over there we are not calling the function it's very funny so when you give a b of 35 so now 35 plus 25 you get the answer as 60 so just make sure that don't never ever give the first argument as default arguments that's very very important so this is a key take from default arguments you can check yourself so many people think that they can pass it but no you cannot do it right so now let's make one more use case of variable length arguments because generally when you're trying to pass some parameters representing variable number of arguments or i mean different length of arguments just make sure that if you're making any default arguments just be very reliable and how many values you are trying to pass okay now what do we do is I'll just make up a simple uh, program where my user can give any number of values and I should just try to calculate the sum of those values, right? He may give 10 values where I'm not taking only, 10, only numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That becomes a different thing. You can take a while loop or for loop, you can write it. But my use case is how can I use this star arcs by taking some 
multiple input from user multiple input from user and calculate the sum so obviously when i'm taking sum that will that will be obviously numbers only so i define my function name as addition so define addition of so what do i do is i'll directly make my first argument as the formal argument because generally the first argument is always the formal argument where with that argument only you can just try to relate the other thing because obviously that will be non default right so you can consider that as the formal argument so here a is formal argument and i keep star b that means you are trying to pass multiple values over there so obviously what happens over there you can give description right variable length arguments demo okay now what do i do is i wanted to find out the sum of values right so create a variable to store the sum where this is the variable to store the sum of values in b because obviously if i give a comma b i need not write d equal to 0 or anything i just write return a plus b but i don't know how many values user may give he may give one value or three values or 10 values whatever it is right so now you have taken this logic so directly go with the implementation or even if you wanted to see the type of b you will be surprised to see the result as a tuple because you are trying to unpack the values so that's where the representation in the format of tuple right so even you can understand the same logic when you take up a list or when you take up a tuple you'll understand it but here you can clearly see when you finally represent the type of it so then you write a for loop for i in b what do you want you wanted to add each and every value right obviously then you update the sum so d is equal to d plus i or you can also take it as d plus is equal to i if you are good at assignment operators it's done you need not worry about it and you can directly print d but you'll be getting an error i'll be showing you what you what you should do so directly you can call the function so what is the function you can give addition of how many values you want to give so first i give 1 4 5 let's give three arguments so the answer should be 5 plus 4 9 9 plus 1 10 okay now when i save and execute you see what could be the result you got the class as tuple i told you right so star b that means the type of b is tuple it is storing in the format of a sequence that is the reason you are able to write a for loop but what is the answer you got 4 and 4 plus 5 you got what is the answer you got 4 plus 5 you got as 9 but you are getting but what should be the result you should get you should get the answer as 10 okay you are in the for loop you think that you can come out of the for loop you get only 9 as the result there is nothing much change over there you see because you are not adding this variable with the formal argument that's a very simple mistake right which i wantedly gave you should understand that point so return because obviously should make sure that what happens if i don't write in that way what happens if i write in this way always think in that logic so now when you save this and when you execute that you see you get the answer as 10 right in the same way you can pass any number of values addition of or you can give 1 4 2.3 5 8 9 anything 9 to 6 10 so when you save and when you execute according to your number of values you can clearly get the result the class as tuple because you are writing one more function call if you would want to use return you can directly use return here but always return of right so return of d plus a and that return should be not inside the for loop but outside the for loop so what happens if you return inside the for loop so if you are writing return over there that means you should give print here if you don't give print you cannot fetch the result because you don't give any other statement right return will return the result return will return the result to a function it results the values to the function basically so when you execute that what are you getting 5 and 5 what is the wrong over there so basically this is the first va ending value d plus a that's where you are going doing some mistake so don't do that so always keep the value outside the function i mean always keep the value outside the loop over here not the function even if you keep it outside here you'll be getting an error always just make sure 
why you should keep return inside the function as you're having loop you can take anything whether you return the values or use print it depends on user logic so you can also take the same program in a different way where you want to take input from a user and single input and multiple input there you go there you'll be finding some difference and i'll show you the difference over here so i don't want to run the bo script so i'll just keep quotations here triple quotes down and i want to take single input first so a is equal to int of input of enter a value then you'll understand the difference how does star differs and how does you take the values in a sequence so you already know how to take multiple input from a user right so b is equal to int of x for x in input of enter the values so that it will be easy for user to understand when they enter the values that is the reason always make it very simple when you go for taking multiple input from a user just write quotation just write uh, the enter the values or like this kind of thing when you go for input function okay now you have taken input multiple input from a user let's copy the same program and make it reliable so i'll write a function called differently so just copy paste here so you define addition of a comma star b and even if you want to check the type of it you already know b is a list right so type of b okay and even if you want to see the result of it print of b okay now you are taking input from a user so directly call the function so how do you call it you just give print of the function name is addition and you take you are taking input from a user you can give a comma you are already taking b right so let's give like star b what happens you see the difference now because b is already a list right now type of b is a list here so star b nothing but variable in torg means you don't know how many values user can give so let me just execute this and explain how does that differs so when I execute that so enter a value 5 1 4 5 2 see 1 4 5 2 5 plus 2 is 7 7 plus 4 is 11 right so 5 plus 2 is 7 right 7 plus 4 is 11 11 plus 1 is uh, 12 12 plus 5 is 17 so clearly the first uh, type is list and here when you give print of type of b what happens that's a tuple because it is storing in the format of a sequence and you gave a as input and star b there is no difference right that means you can pass directly or without giving star also so when i keep this when i remove this star b you already know the logic right obviously b is a sequence so i take same example but you can only clearly see the difference it is a list here so class of list 2 plus 5 7 7 plus 4 11 12 12 plus 5 17 that's it so you need not worry so if you are taking multiple input from a user without or with star doesn't make any difference but star b is generally variable in arguments if you don't know the number of arguments are fixed so make it very simple if you are taking multiple input from a user already it is a sequence you can directly mention the mention that in function argument and go with your own logic but if you clearly see the type is changed from list and tuple because you gave star b star is for unpacking the arguments in the format of a tuple even you take in take from a list or tuple but star b is basically right using i mean or, i mean unpacking the values from a tuple and the same thing will understand when we go for double star that's where double star quarks keyword variable in argument because these play a very very key role when you relate the same thing into classes concept because always rely on very simple logic how do you define a function what is the logic you are writing and how does function call is taking place this plays a very very key role whether you develop any application you rely only on this logic it will be very easier for you to go ahead